Who wouldn't love to have a family like this one? Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 full house running gags. For this list, we'll be looking at the most recognizable traits and jokes that everybody's favorite family displayed on the sitcom. In case you still aren't aware of this family's antics, then here's your one and only spoiler alert. Number 10, their catchphrases. Got it, dude. The most recognizable quality of this show over the years has been its catchphrases. No way, Jose. Each of the main characters has a line for themselves, especially the younger ones, who seemingly have a catchphrase reserved for every situation. How rude. <laughs> These are used to highlight every person's characterization, representing their mischievousness, naivete, or in Uncle Jesse's case, his flirty nature. Have mercy. No matter the occasion, as hilarious or or emotional it might be, fans can count on at least one of these to be uttered in each episode. Got it, dude. Because of the long-lasting impact of these catchphrases, they've even been carried forward to the 21st Century sequel series Fuller House, two similar results. You forgot two very important words. Have mercy. <laughs> no. How rude. <laughs> Number 9, Steve's never-ending appetite. You know, I learned something today. If it comes out of a goat, I'm eating it. With his nice guy quality and innocent nature, Steve Hale became an instantly likable addition as DJ Tanner's first steady boyfriend. However, his most well-known attribute remains his never-ending hunger. Due to his status as a high school athlete, he carries a very healthy appetite, making it a habit to raid the Tanner's fridge whenever he can. It doesn't stop there, though, as Steve's lack of self-control means he doesn't mind eating other people's leftover food. Steve? What? Soon enough, it becomes second nature to see Steve with something edible in his hands, and he eventually takes things further by making his own mix of rather questionable meals. Okay, I'm all set. Got all the basic food groups covered. Salt, fat, sugar, and nacho cheese. Number 8. Jesse's love for Elvis Presley. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. You're a beautiful audience. Thank you. A lot of hilarious incidents are dedicated to Jesse's pursuit of a career in music, and we have Elvis to thank for them. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> you remind me so much. I know. Wayne Newton. Being extremely dedicated to the king, Jesse molds his outlook on life around him. Although it's usually harmless, this obsession does get out of hand on occasion, especially when Becky fears that their wedding will be a complete duplicate of Elvis's own. You look like a hunk of hunk of burning bride, baby. <laughs> if Jesse had his way, everyone would follow Elvis's teachings as well, as he tries his best to ingrain this philosophy to the children. Wouldn't you rather have an Elvis party? <laughs> Get an idea, instead of all those goofy little hats, your friends can wear little tiny sideburns. What do you say, little mama? No, thank you, big daddy. From trying to turn Michelle's birthday party into an Elvis party, and dressing his own children in Elvis's image, Jesse's craze knows no bounds. But hey, what can you expect from someone who tries to make a dog sing Elvis songs? Hang on, I got one. All right. <laughs> Elvis dog. <laughs> Well, since my poodle left me, I gotta find a new place to smell. It's down at the end of Lonely Sea. I'll bring you to the Number seven, all the hugging. I'll take a free hug anytime. Laughter is supposed to be the best medicine, but for this family, hugging fixes all problems. Although some of them started out being rather reluctant toward it, it didn't take long before everyone was out there doling out hugs. Face it, pal, you're a tanner. <laughs> In fact, it's only on rare occasions when an episode doesn't end with at least two characters hugging, as the family treats it like the period at the end of a sentence. Whether it's after a big fight or simply to wish someone well, you can bet these people are going to go in for that physical act. The finale hilariously pokes fun at this practice, too, as the amnesiac Michelle comments on how bizarre it is to see everyone be so willing to hug. I've been walking around this house with an empty head and hugging people I hardly even know. Well, get ready, because once they realize I'm back, they're gonna go hug wild. Fittingly, even the final shot of the series has everyone go in for one last embrace. Number six, Kimmy's foot odor. I haven't had a pedicure in my whole life. <laughs> Ew, gross! <laughs> What makes Kimmy Gibbler the perfect contrast to DJ is how wild she is compared to her prim and proper friend. 
Due to Kimmy's devil-may-care attitude, she's shown to be careless in the manner of sanitation, especially when it comes to her feet. Considered as something of a weapon of mass destruction by the Tanners, Kimmy's feet have been used to serve out punishments, mainly because of how bad they smell. To make matters funnier, Kimmy's aware of this herself and uses it as a way to torment others for her own pleasure. Hey, Brian! Want to smell my feet? <laughs> The stench surrounding her feet proves to be so horrible that it even ends up haunting Jessie's nightmares. Decades later, the older Kimmy doesn't shy about flashing her feet either. Makes me want to just kick off my shoes and put my feet up. <laughs> Number 5. Jesse and Joey acting like a married couple. Who doesn't love a good bromance? Oh, oh, oh. Ah. While Joey was introduced as Danny's childhood friend, it was with Jesse that he had the best times. After initially being at odds, their relationship blossoms into a loving one, as they take care of the girls together, start a business, and become the best of friends. As long as I'm the director, you will be treated with dignity and respect. Thank you. Okay, hose them down. A common misunderstanding on the show is when minor characters think of them as a romantic item. But who can blame them, considering how much they argue like a married couple? Joy and I have a baby. <laughs> <laughs> hey, your personal lives are none of my business. <laughs> Another recurring theme involves the two getting trapped in one hijinks after another, followed by their disastrous attempts to make things right. No matter how ludicrous the situation, you can be sure these two are going to make it memorable. An old bar rag, a, a rat. <laughs> Freak under a bucket. Number four, Joey's impressions. Wait. I'll handle this. I'm a comic. It's my non-paying job to cheer people up. Um, hi, Michelle. It's me, Kermit the Frog. Um, uh, you don't want to cry, do you? Due to his job as a comedian, being funny comes naturally to Joey. I want to try out my new Roger Rabbit impression at the Laugh Machine. Joey, it's Saturday <laughs> night. Oh, come on, Jess. Please. <laughs> Please. While he's got his fair share of jokes, his main act involves doing impressions. This fits in well with his role in the Tanner household, as Joey articulates his thoughts and feelings through hilarious cartoon voices. <laughs> Although the kids start out being exasperated with Joey's impersonations, they begin looking forward to what he comes up with next. From using this talent to wiggle out of trouble, to imitating baby Michelle, Joey has a voice fit for every occasion. However, his most recurring bit involves Bullwinkle, an impression Joey himself seems unable to get enough of. I'm uh, fluent in frog. <laughs> Let's see, I studied moose at What's the Matter You. <laughs> and uh, I speak just a smattering of sailor. Number three, Kimmy annoying Jesse, Danny, and Stephanie. There's always that one friend everybody hates, and that's certainly Kimmy's role as far as Danny, Jesse, and Stephanie are concerned. As much as DJ loves having her around, her family members despise her even more. Oh, don't worry, T-Bone. I'll be there. This hatred makes sense, though, considering all the smack talk Kimmy sends their way. Oh, if the words are too big for you to read, you can always color on it. <laughs> Horoscope? What's that, Kimmy? A telescope that can only see your face? While Stephanie's problems with her have to do with Kimmy being annoying, Danny and Jesse see her as their arch nemesis. The Tanner family have more than a few choice words to throw Kimmy's way to, although she's got a whole lot of comebacks reserved for them. Meanwhile, Jesse's hatred knows no bounds, as he and Kimmy regularly feud to the point where he'd like nothing more than to bring Gibbler down. Don't get your kilt in a knot, McGreasy. <laughs> the festival is next week. After that, this place will be quieter than Loch Ness. Yeah, but I'll still be stuck with a monster. Number two, Danny's cleaning. Good morning, troops. It is now 0700, and it's time to attack the enemy. Grease, grime, slime, sludge. And that's just Joey's room. While each character has their own list of eccentricities, for Danny, cleaning isn't just a hobby. Not only does he look forward to cleaning the house, but he also revels in making his family members join in on the fun with him. This obsession reaches fever pitch at times, like when he breaks up with a woman for not being clean enough for him. This isn't a problem, is it? <laughs> Messy room? Problem for me? 
<laughs> no. Confronting his issues doesn't do much good either, as Danny has also been seen lecturing animals over their unclean habits. But do you animals care if the forest isn't vacuumed? I saw what you did on the trail back there, Norman. While the show does explain that Danny's cleaning issue started after his wife's death, it's still hard not to laugh at a guy who cleans his own cleaning equipment. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Jesse's Hair Be very, very, very careful, Mr. Stephanie. Because as we all know, no one really cuts my hair except for Alejandro. Even after maturing considerably, Jesse's fixation over his hair always remains. He's happy to share the secret to his beautiful locks, too, even if it means popping up on another show. One third uh, moose and then one third gel. Today I switched it. One third gel, two third moose. Kind of throw things off a little bit, kind of shock the hair to a whole new, you know, whole. <laughs> Nobody cares about hair. To defend his overprotectiveness, Jesse concocts an entire explanation over why hair is so important in his life, and it's pretty hard to argue against him. And when you get old, again, boom, bald. <laughs> that magic in between time, that's the important time, guys. That's when you gotta grow your hair, nurture it with the proper accoutrements, and then... Flunted. At times, losing hair tends to throw Jesse into a bad mood, especially in the case of Stephanie causing a little snipping accident. Oops. Oops. Well, well, what oops? Well, what does oops mean? Jesse's fear of becoming bald manifests in crazy ways, too, as he takes to speaking to his hairs in secret as if they have a life of their own. Conditioned and hot oiled. Just standing proud. Blowing in the breeze, hanging over my face, looking naturally tousled at just the right angle. <laughs> Most importantly, and I can't stress this enough, never, I repeat never, fall out. To be fair, who wouldn't want luscious hair like Jesse's? Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.